Good morning and welcome back to Almas Market Mornings, your daily dose of global financial updates. It's Friday and seems that the day has started for us waking up to the news about fresh explosion in Iran, Syria and Iraq. All of this has pushed gold back higher and of course the risk of sentiment has prevailed. Morning JK, I think not a good news to wake up to and of course this brings more uncertainty for the weekend. Uh, what's your thought? Uh, good morning, Swaraj. Uh, it's been a very tension-ridden start to uh, friend Friday trading and uh, geopolitical ten- tensions have definitely risen. Uh, reportedly, Israel launched missile strikes on Iran's nuclear program. Apart from the you know explosions that were heard in uh, you know Syria and Iraq as well, and uh, this I think um, you know moments later Iran has cleared the entire airspace and redirected all the planes away from missile launch sites, likely in preparation to launch a response. See, till yesterday uh, it was hoped that the diplomatic pressure on Israel would prevail and uh, there would be restraint on any response to what Iran did over the last weekend. But uh, that has proved to be wrong, and uh, you know this seems to be an you know gaining further momentum uh, as far as the geopolitical tensions are concerned. Obviously, the markets immediately reacted very uh, sharply. Uh, yields are down across the board. Uh, two year uh, down uh, nearly eight eight basis points. Ten year and thirty year are down more than ten basis points. Um, gold is up at uh, 2410 uh, it was trading at uh, 2380 yesterday uh, so crude is also up 2% and these are not uh, uh, surprising uh, uh, yeah to complete the cycle the you know stock markets are you know majorly down nikkei is down 3% uh, korea down 2.5% so it it's a sea of red everywhere as far as the stock markets are concerned. And the dollar is up, of course, as a safe haven. Uh, euro down from the highs that was seen uh, yesterday at uh, 1.0680, uh, down at 1.0610 now. And most important, yen as a safe haven, plus got a bid uh, from 154.50 in the morning, uh, down to 153.65. And this is despite, uh, you know, a fall in the... Uh, you know, inflation in Japan, headline inflation as well as the core inflation falling and coming lower than expected. So uh, now uh, all the markets are taking cues only from the geopolitics and not so much from uh, the economic data. Of course, we did have quite a few economic data. There was uh, further evidence of strength in US economy yesterday, confirmation of revival of manufacturing. Philadelphia Fed manufacturing index rose uh, 15.5. Uh, versus uh, 3.2 in March and uh, prices paid, new orders and employment, all of them were uh, quite uh, quite strong. And we also had a jobless claim that came below forecast again, confirming that, uh, you know, the economy is uh, still strong on the employment sector. Uh, only sobering side was the leading economic index. It's a forward-looking indicator, which fell 0.3% versus 0.1% rise uh, last month. Month. And this is something that is prompting many economics to call for a slowdown in the U.S. economy in the coming quarters. And the conference board itself is looking for a recession in first quarter of uh, next year. That's 2025. Uh, we had quite a few, uh, uh, you know, central bank statements. Uh, chief among them was the, uh, you know, the Fed vice chairman, Mr. Williams, who said uh, he feels no urgency to cut interest rates. Uh, you know, a strong economy and inflation uh, stubborn and, uh, you know, uh, all the way, uh, he, you know, inflation, unless it goes all the way to 2%, he doesn't see, uh, you know, uh, rate cuts happening uh, in a hurry. Uh, and also, uh, although interest rates will have to lower at some point of time, uh, you know, most importantly, he also said, that uh, while the rate hikes are not his baseline, uh, if data are telling us that we should hike interest rates to achieve our goals, then we would obviously want to do that. So this also was supporting the dollar yesterday. On the other side, uh, we had quite a few ECB members like uh, Mr. Wilroy, Mr. Knott, uh, and also one more member. They actually called for, uh, you know, June rate cuts and that and the market expectations uh, were mentioned to be par for the course. Uh, so I think ECB is having some uh, you know, difference of opinion among the members. There are hawks and there have been doves. Uh, the president herself has been pushing for uh, restraint uh, or rather, you know, uh, waiting and watching. Uh, yes, 
we, we are still in April, mid-April, and uh, we have uh, two more months to go before that ECB also will have more inflation numbers uh, uh, to grind. Uh, we will have we know that the crude prices have been going up. Eventually, even that may push the eurozone inflation. So it's not a final word on the uh, ECB rate cuts as well. So overall, uh, many factors are uh, working towards uh, dollar uh, strength, of course, uh, yen strength as well due to uh, safe haven gold renewed surge. Of course, 2431, the previous high uh, will be a resistance. On the rupee, not much movement was seen yesterday. 8350, of course, held very well. And we closed with a new all-time low. Of course, a marginal uh, low at uh, uh, 83.54. Uh, PSA banks were uh, pro uh, reportedly offering consistently, uh, probably at the behest of central bank. Uh, initial strength, of course, was due to the recovery in some of the Asian currencies. But all that, of course, has been reversed today. We are seeing offshore already trading at 83, 70, 71 uh, uh, today. And uh, uh, notably, uh, the FI flows uh, from India uh, from near 2 billion plus uh, earlier in the month has turned into negative 300 million. So uh, that's another negative uh, point uh, for the markets and we also had quite a bit of volatility in the stock market yesterday uh, which should continue because of the geopolitical tensions all in all uh, sentiments towards the rupee as well as uh, overall other currencies not so uh, you know not so good today dollar uh, i think uh, is going to uh, reign supreme and particularly with weekend coming up i think uh, safety will be the first priority for all traders thank you Thank you, JK, and uh, definitely not a good news to wake up to uh, and not a good news for the start of the weekend. Uh, geopolitical tensions have risen. Israel uh, has launched some attack on Iran's nuclear sites. Uh, their status remains unknown, but looking at the airspace, it seems there is some preparation underway by Iran to retaliate. And of course, there is a sea of red for the stocks at the start of the Asian trading session. Dollar has been on bid uh, as safe even buying has uh, emerged. On the economic data, we are seeing some revival of manufacturing in the U.S. Uh, recent data has been strong, along with lower jobless claims. So uh, all in all, a stronger U.S. economy along with tight labor market, sort of like a Goldilocks uh, situation. Uh, when it comes to rupee, close to be closed at an all -time, uh, new all-time low at 83.54. Uh, but the offshore already showing some weakness about trading above 83.70, uh, as J.K. mentioned, uh, on the pre-open. But uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's a concerning factor. And overall, the global uh, sentiment also remains on the weaker end. That's it from us today. Uh, that is, uh, that's it from us today. Thanks for listening. Tune in on Monday for the latest on the financial markets.